welcome back. Today we're going to talk about equilibrium and feedback, specifically with environmental examples since there aren't too many online. The first question I want you to think about during today's lecture is explain the nature of equilibria. And the second question is define and explain the principles of positive and negative feedback cycles. First, let's go over a quick couple of definitions and a simple or common example. If you look at the definition of equilibrium, it's a state of balance among the components of a system. And the feedbacks being the outputs that you see as a result of inputs, which affect the next outputs. So for example, in this uh, picture here, you can see that the ideal number of mice they have in this system is three. You can see the output in that uh, if the mouse population diminishes, you have a new variable where the food supply is increasing. If you have more food, if you have more reproduction and a population increase, then we have a population increase up in this position. However, a population increase leads to a shortage of food, which causes more mice to die off and the population comes back down and then it gets close to this equilibrium. This is very common in a lot of different populations that can be animals or plants and there are limiting factors that will affect the size of that population. So with that first example, let's take a look now and see if we can classify it. And uh, here's a, a very common one in environmental situations, um, which is negative feedback. Negative feedback tends to damp down or neutralize or counteract any deviation from equilibrium. So let's take a look at a quick simulator using this program called NetLogo, which you can find online for free. Um, I'm going to set up my situation. Notice in here I've got a lot of uh, wolves and a lot of sheep. And in this case, I'm going to turn the grass on. That's kind of important for what we do. And when I hit go, you're going to see the populations here change rapidly. They're going up, they're going down, and up and down. In the image, you can see how the wolf population goes up, the grass is probably a little easier to see it growing and shrinking. If you connect this simulation to the population data here, you can start to see that the sheep have an equilibrium that's floating right around 160 or 170 sheep as their equilibrium population with wolves down here around um, 60 as far as their population. So I'm gonna stop this for a second, take a picture of that, go back into here. And what we said was, if we can basically draw this line here, uh, the population ideally for the sheep was around 160. And then for the wolves, again, this population trend that goes up and down from that line that we said was closer to 60. The steady state for the sheep was around 160. So if the sheep population increases, the wolf population lags behind a little bit, but it can also increase as a result of that. But if the predator population gets too big, then the sheep population will go down. And as a result, following later, the wolf population will go down. You can also see those connections in the level of grass that they show in this situation. Positive feedback, as far as environmental examples go, there, there are quite a few, but I'll highlight a couple of them briefly for you. Let's say you have a uh, waste incineration factory where you burn waste and eh, it causes a little bit of pollution, but you burn waste in order to send out electricity into uh, a system from a city or something. Now, in order to power this plant, you need waste to go into the plant, something that can actually be burned. The outcome is the electricity that we get. If we produce some electricity, then people are going to um, use more electricity. If they use more electricity, they're going to get used to a lifestyle of using more electricity. So they're going to ultimately then produce more waste in order to produce electricity. If they have more electricity, they use more electricity, which they need to produce more waste. And you can see this cycle starts to get away from equilibrium. So you have a positive feedback where you're amplifying or increasing the change. 
Another common example environmentally is global warming, which is essentially an increase in temperature. There are some places like uh, tundra that could melt. So as a result of the temperature going up, we're going to have tundra that melts. If tundra melts, it actually holds a lot of methane and it will release that methane back into the environment. When methane is released into the environment, it can increase temperature again, which leads to more melting, which leads to more release of methane. So you can see that this positive loop here will amplify or increase away from equilibrium. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you learned something new. If you check out the reading link associated with this, you'll see a few more examples of environmental feedback cycles, positive or negative.